I got a couple of notes from people that um, I should really use the sky hook to move the steady rest over here. And that would actually be fantastic. And I've kind of fumbled around doing just that. Unfortunately, the uh, tailstock is so big that the sky hook doesn't have enough room to get it over there. Um, so anyway, the, uh, the plan is to make some sort of a modification or adjustment to make that happen. But as of right now, that doesn't work. One thing that's driven me crazy for a long time is not having a proper lathe turning tool height gauge or height setter, whatever you want to call it. There's lots of videos on YouTube about preferred methods and whatnot to do this. So I'm just gonna share mine because I'm out here in the shop and it's a nice day. Uh, figured some people would probably wanna see this if you've never seen somebody make one. There's a bunch of different ways to go about it. You can get real fancy. This is gonna be real simple. Basically uh, following the pattern or design anyway of Joe Pizinski. Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Um, so we're gonna make it fairly straightforward. I'm using the collet chuck because it's a little easier to remove the material and put it back in there. We're just gonna be taking very light cuts to uh, get down to our, our final size. Um, what I've used in the past has been my Sterrett um, height gauge. So it's got a vernier scale on it and I just leave it set to the correct measurement for um, lathe tool center height. And obviously when I need to use the height gauge for something else, I've got to mess up my, my um, lathe tool height thing and redo it later. So. so right now my height gauge is just sitting on the top of the carriage. You can see that the very tip of the scriber is exactly at the center line of the material here in the chuck. And that's basically what we're trying to replicate is when this piece of material is done, if it's sitting down on the uh, tailstock way, the flat way here, it'll be at that same exact height. So that when I put a tool in the tool post, I can adjust it up and down until it meets at the very, very top of this guy and allows me to dial in the tool. So this is gonna be quick and dirty. All we're gonna do is face off this end, uh, drill and counter bore for a magnet. So when I epoxy the, ma the magnet in there, uh, it'll hold on to the bedways a little bit and I don't have to worry about it um, falling over quite as easily. And then we'll flip this guy around, turn down, uh, once we get it you know, to, to length, um, we'll turn down a section and then mill off maybe two, two corners to make a point on one side and um, that'll give us some versatility on depending on what kind of tool I'm trying to uh, set for the height. Another question I got a couple of times was on cutting oil. So there were recommendations to use WD-40 or kerosene or something like that uh, rather than the cutting oil I was using. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't like to do that because I hate the smell of those things. So rather than use um, something like that, I found a cutting oil that is compatible with cutting aluminum. It does a, a, a fine job. I use uh, rapid tap on pretty much everything except really tough stuff. And then I'll go to um, some Molly D for those kinds of things.
in the spirit of keeping things super simple, uh, I think what we'll do is just scribe this piece of material with my height gauge and then we'll sneak up on that line. I think I've got, got myself pretty close here. So these are one, two, three blocks, uh, inspection grade. So those are the nicest ones I've got. And then I've got a four inch uh, gauge block and then an 850 gauge block and a, uh, what is this? 145 thousandths gauge block. So by eye and touch, I think I'm extremely close. Let's put an indicator across both of those and see how close it is. Indicator is zeroed, we're pretty, Happy with that front uh, longitudinally on the bed anyway. So that tells us our blocks are pretty flat against the, um, the bedways. So as we get to the edge, yeah, that puts a little bit of load on there. So why don't we adjust it? Okay, there we go. So zero on the gauge blocks. And then if we come over here to our height gauge, I'm gonna go ahead and tilt it down a little bit to help that pointer. Okay. So yeah, we are exactly two off, it looks like. So the height gauge is two thousandths higher than the gauge block stack. So I'm gonna swap this out for a 147. I got a, a very nice gauge block set on Craigslist and the one thing it was lacking were the uh, holders. So you could kind of clamp them together properly so they didn't, um, didn't have to be quite so nervous about them falling apart from one another. But anyway. So there's our height gauge zero. Let's go back over here and very carefully hold on to this. There we go. Just to make sure the indicator didn't push them off, make everything fall down. So that is pretty darn close. So we're in the ballpark, but it's not super close. So I think what we'll start off with is just using a uh, depth micrometer and see how much has to come off of this thing. And then once we get really close, we'll probably use an indicator to measure the difference between the two. All right, what I'm measuring there is 68 thousandths. Nope, sorry. So that is actually 43 thousandths. Yeah, 18 plus 25. I was messing up reading on the wrong side of the lines for uh, with the depth mic. But anyway, yeah, so 25 plus 18. So why don't we take off or shoot for taking off about um, 38. We'll, we'll touch off as, as gently as we can to, to try and not mess ourselves up and then remove 38 thousandths and then come back and measure. As gentle as possible, touching off. Wasn't that gentle, was it? It's okay. So from there, we'll go 36.
I'm gonna chicken out a little bit. It's easier to take more than it is to start over. So from my chunky touch off point, that's 30 thousandths. Gauge block is sliding around a little bit, but if we zero out there on the gauge block stack, come over to our part and we are four tenths taller or longer. So that's within less than half a thousandth. Um, I don't know if I wanna even try on getting closer than that. Um, I'm really glad I didn't dial in 36 like I said I was going to, because then I'd be five and a half short, which would have really been aggravating. So I think we just call it good, you know, leave well enough alone kind of deal. And then um, the last thing to do will just be to, I think what I'll do is mill on one side and then mill on the adjacent side to make a point. And then I'll also have a flat, you know, that I can um, also have a, a flat here that I can use as, you know, lining up a, a parting blade or something like that that's, that's got a flat front to it. So to get this thing to stick better, I'm gonna see if this will work. Just, yeah, it looks, looks good. I've just got my little die makers sanding block. Can't remember what they call these. Really handy little deburring tool. Yeah, just make a mess on there. Give the epoxy something more surface area to stick to and grab. Be in there at different thicknesses. Unfortunately, of course, all the little grit is all ferrous, so it's sticking. Okie doke, and then for my epoxy, I think I've shown this on the channel before. Uh, this is Hardman two-part epoxy. It's just a little small pack that um, you, you don't have much work time. It, it sets up very quickly, but um, you don't have to have a, a whole container open, which is why I like it. This is uh, okay. Never had a problem opening that before, but anyway, so um, I learned about these when I worked at a big golf super center and did a lot of club repairs. This was typically what we'd use if a customer just had one club they wanted to fix or with, that we were fixing for them. And then, yeah, we also sold it. So this is too much, but it's better than busting out a um, two-part cartridge that you then have to worry about getting all uh, setting up and getting ruined. You can't use it at all next time. So. Any who's will be. So this is gonna be a mess, I'm sure. Clean this stuff off with mineral spirits. I'm guessing, hoping acetone works as well. All right, three to five minutes working time and it's gonna be cured as hard as it's ever gonna get. Um, one little tip, leave this right here and then when you think you're done, you can grab this and try and stir it around. And if it's rock solid, then that means your part's done too. It's been about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Gonna harden just a tiny bit more, but I think we are in business.
looks all right. There you can see the tool is just a teeny tiny bit higher than our height setter. There we go. Nice and easy adjustment. So one of the things I didn't really understand when I was first getting into machining, and maybe this will help somebody else out, the reason you can't just set this once and then call it good is because you're, in general, you're using different inserts in here and they're not all gonna have the same geometry. So this insert is designed for cutting aluminum. It's got a very positive uh, chip breaker on it. So it's still a negative rake tool, it's still CNMG, or um, uh, it still fits into CNMG, but the tool itself, the insert, is much taller on this edge than another insert might be. So if I take this insert out and put in a, a grade for roughing steel, it's gonna have a much more, a much lower point on it, and I'll need to re readjust um, where the, the tool is sitting on the tool post. If I uh, feel ambitious, maybe I'll chuck it up and. Um, cut the cut the OD so it's nice and shiny, but I wanted this to be kind of a quick and dirty representation of making a tool height gauge, and this one will work out pretty well, I think. Do another example here, my grooving and parting tool, and that guy maybe a thousandth. There we go. Nicely done. And then I can lock my adjusting nut again. And there we go. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been a fun little project, just an hour or two in the afternoon, and certainly would have been faster not having to film. But, um, you know, anyway, it's, it's a nice little project. If you've got a lathe, this is something that I've been meaning to make for a long time and finally took a couple of minutes to do it. So now I've got a, a nice handy shop made tool, even if it's not real pretty, it was quick and easy. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.